Okay, so I was online today to look up since I got a Marshall Code 50, right? It's been a couple months. I've got my sound. I pulled a few other sounds out of it. But so I figured I was looking, I was out on the front porch tootling around on the pad, you know, and typed in Randy Rhodes Tone Code 50. One guy pops up and he can't get it, obviously, using the, you know, thinks he can actually put in like the uh, type of marshal that Randy had, the settings he put in. Randy's settings and get the sound. No, no. Well, first, Randy's amps were modded. You got to take that into consideration. Two, they had EL34s. You have to put the JCM setting on. You have to boost the preamps. And you don't use the settings he used. Plus, everything you hear... Live, you hear stereo. He's running, uh, what, two, three stacks? But he's in stereo. He's running in stereo. And you should really hear it when he does that uh, delay thing. In the studio, he, was, he would uh, double or triple. Almost every single lead was tripled. And the rhythms were usually quadrupled four tracks using usually now this is from what I you know because I asked him dude you sound incredible on this and this suicide solution is my favorite really so I wanted to teach me that when he came back from the break he did and I asked him a very few questions because he didn't want to get into it too much unless it was had to do with guitar so this is where all the Randy stuff comes in so, uh, you you cannot get Randy's tone on the mo on the Code 50. You can't. You cannot do it. Someone might be able to write it in, and that's to be done yet. I haven't seen it or heard it. Two, you should be running in stereo always if you're going to try to get any type of tone like his. Three. He had Altec speakers in his cabinets. More brightness. MXR Distortion Plus. Chainsaw. Altec speakers. Bright. His EQ was like the mids were boosted. I mean, this guy was just going for chain uh, for a buzzsaw crazy sound, but it was a it was a kind of like a takeover from his crazy you know, PV amp that he had going. I think it was a PV. And it, I don't even think it was a guitar cab amp. It was a bass. And he had Altec speakers in that. And then it, what made his sound was all of his effects, which was a buttload, starting with the, the uh, distortion, the EQ, <clears throat> and then uh, down the line. He had a chorus, at Roland stereo uh, chorus. He had, you know, go online and look. A lot of that he had already. He brought it with him and had a professional board made. I think the board was made before he even went. But what was absolutely, absolutely <laughs> forbidden was for him to take the horrifying amplifier over to England to record. So, the guy that replaced him for a while in Quiet Riot, Greg Leon, the guy who works on my amp now, it wasn't the guy that worked on it at the beginning, but my amp is modded just like his, more like Eddie's though. It's a great, it's a beautiful sounding amp. The best. The best. And I've had three of Eddie's Marshalls in my garage when Chris Holmes was crashing here and we were trying to get a band together with my old singer in Fatal Attraction. It was called Rat Bastard. I played through the amps. I'm like, wow, I sound me playing through somebody else's Marshalls. But I got my friend Ruben down here. He played through them. It sounded like flipping Eddie Van Halen. It was unbelievable. I was freaking out. I was sweating. It was so incredible. 
You don't believe me? Ruben Reza. Ask him. He came down here and played through him. So this would be a really stupid concoction lie if I had to tell that. So there you go. He also played guitar in my Randy Rhodes tribute because there's no way I could pull that off. So I have got <clears throat> a Marshall Code 50. So I have put it I'm in the JCM 800 with the uh, preamp, the drive. And that's it. That's all you can do. And it gets eh. So you have to run a stereotype thing. And when I just got this TC Electronic Mimic, that does the trick. So I brought out my old buddy that I just dug out a few days ago. Because it has the exact same pickups as Randy's. A, this is a 19 link, yeah, 1978-79 Super Distortion. Uh, Larry DiMarzio. <clears throat> I had it potted when I had it put in here. And this is a PAF. Exact ones. And if he would have lived, he would have had this on his next real Jackson. The one they were shipping him had another stupid, you know, uh, fucking, uh, what you call it? A regular Fender type, you know, bridge because he couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted uh, to go Floyd Rose which Eddie was doing I think he wanted something different than Eddie he was trying to distance himself from Eddie as much as he possibly could the only reason he did any or even when he did it he did it different than Eddie did you know at flying high again where he did the double taps even then it killed him to even have to do that, but he wanted to show that he could do what he Eddie could do, but better. And he actually knew how to play guitar. He wasn't just pretending. Like Eddie, he's a genius. Got a great sound. He made a $200 guitar sound like a zillion dollar guitar. That's why I say anybody that pays more than 250 bucks for a guitar is an idiot. Because you don't need to. Still. So, here's my Marshall. Here's my settings. You cannot get it without getting extra effects. So all I'm going to do is use a uh, the Mimic to give it the stereo sound. Widen it up a bit. And uh, chorus. A little chorus. This is for the Diary of Mad Men. And there's your Randy sound that you're going to get out of the uh, Code 50 if you work at it. <laughs> That's just that's just the Marshall. All right, now with the uh, mimic and the uh, chorus. <laughs>
right, that's it. So there is your taste of uh, what it should sound like. If you have a code 50 and drive, put it, the uh, preamp, drive it. And all you really need is a flipping chorus. Get the Zach Wild chorus, because he had that made to sound like Randy's. Uh, Roland and whatever else. Yeah, Roland chorus and something else. Can't remember. Can't remember everything. Someone asked me the other day what his shoe size was. Dude, I didn't date him. <laughs> I mean, the last time I saw him, I think I was 16. Yeah. And that was just for a couple of weeks. And I wasn't weeks straight. I mean, he was in town for a few a couple of months, I think, before the diary tour. And then when they started rehearsing for the diary tour downtown, I uh, went down there and I could already see he was pissed because he had to put that black tape on the back of his Concord. He was pissed at that. That Sharon was calling orders that this was Ozzy Osbourne's Diary of a Madman, not the Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman. He was That doesn't come up a lot, does it? But that is a fact. <laughs> so I knew it was done before the tour even split. So I made sure I had to see that action because it was an amazing set. And uh, actually had tickets to see him at Irvine and went to see that show anyways. And Brad Gillis, I thought, was an unfriggin' believable guitar player. At the time, in 82, what he was doing with the bar, no one, not even Eddie Van Halen was doing that crap, man. No. Him and maybe Vinnie Vincent, that was it. And those two are highly underrated guitar players. They are great guitar players. Vinnie Vincent actually, you know, chicken picks. When he's shredding, he's, you know. I have to get out the Randy Rhodes subject. Just keep this Randy Rhodes. So, if you have a Code 50, good luck. You're going to get close to a sound of a Marshall. You need to have some outboard gear. If you don't have two amps, get the TC Electronic Mimic. And tweak it till you get that... You know, beep, 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 you know, it's like almost a slapback sound. Sounds like there's two guitars there. And the chorus on here will not mimic <laughs> the chorus that he used. You need to get at least, if not what he had, and I wouldn't go hunting down unless you're, you know, a total... Because people think, dude, you have all these, you know, Randy Rose... No, not really. I have... What, 12? I guess that's a lot. But I have more Kiss guitars than that. I just don't play them. And I have like 118 guitars. It's a lot of stupid guitars. And a lot of stupid guitars. So, just because I play the Rhodes ones, it's because they're here. And I had a V made that I could play and mess it up. And that Concord, the Unrelict. I smacked the friggin' headstock into a wall, screwed it all the crap. So if I had the relic and I was playing it and did that, I would be fuming right now. But I don't care. I just, you know what I did? Actually, literally, this is why this pin's here. I got a black pin and I just on it and I'm like, okay, good enough. Because it only cost me really a couple hundred bucks. They gave it to me without any tapes or anything. That's the Unrelic Concord that you see me playing. <clears throat> that I'm having something done to that people will probably think I'm an idiot, but yeah, I don't care. It's my guitar. So there you go. <laughs>
that's it. <clears throat> so, if you think you're going to get the Randy Road sound without a little outboard uh, help, you're not going to. So I saw that guy online. He's like, well, this is what I do. And he actually pulled out uh, an old, you know, so I know he's into it. Because he's got the old blue uh, MXR 10 band. Uh, not going to help you. Nope. So I would suggest getting the Mimic just to get the sound bigger. And really, if you got it, get another Code 50 and run it in stereo. If you get another Code 50, get the, what is it, Black Label Society uh, MXR uh, chorus, stereo chorus. If you get that, get a carbon copy for your delay. And there's a setting. You got one all the way this way and one all the way that way. In the middle, straight up. You'll get Randy's basic uh, echo. And get a little, uh, get the Zach Wild, Wild Overdrive. And, that, and if you get that just right, you'll get the Diary of Madman sound using your Marshall Code 50. And if you have two of them, you'll really get it.